The Lord be with you. And also with you. <clears throat> In our prayers, you're going to hear the names <clears throat> of Suzanne No and George No. Uh, Suzanne is the daughter of Pat Nine, uh, the late Pat Nine. If you <coughs> excuse me, if you remember Pat, Pat uh, um, provided the Jesus greets the children um, stained glass window uh, in memory of her husband Bill. Anyway, Suzanne is on hospice. She has multiple myeloma and has been uh, struggling with that for many, many years. Her husband, George, is also on hospice. And George is going to... Uh, his end is extremely near. So, Excuse me, his, his end has happened. It must have happened after I left. Yes. Okay. Today is Christ the King Sunday, or the reign of Christ. And of course, that's when we pray that Christ will reign in our hearts. The gospel text is a difficult one. It is Matthew's It's called, some people call it a parable of the last judgment where the king comes or God comes as a shepherd that divides the sheep from the goats. So we'll see what that means for us. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. It's found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the sovereign over all the earth, the wisdom from on high, our merciful judge and savior. Let us boldly approach the throne of grace, trusting in God's mercy and love. Generous and faithful God, we confess to you all the ways, known and unknown, that we reject and undermine your steadfast love. Though you made us your people, we treat strangers with suspicion. Though you forgave our debts, we collect without mercy, yet we are quick to pass judgment on others. Have mercy on us, O God, and remember your promise to us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Through the living word, Jesus Christ, God forgives your every debt, your every sin, and gives you a new heart and a new spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. Elizabeth, peace. That's peace, bro.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right, and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The first reading is from the 34th chapter of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the sheep shepherd of my people, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged. I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. It's very appropriate in this week that we have Thanksgiving to have our thank offering. The thank offering is a um, collection that the women of the ELCA take every year. Uh, every time someone has a thankful moment, they're supposed to put uh, money aside for their thank offering. So we're going to have a thank offering litany I am then going to, uh, we're going to dedicate the gifts, but before that we do that, we're going to introduce the officers of um, WELCA this year. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today brings the gift of life. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today brings all we need to live with purpose. Today brings the strength to live more fully. Today brings women of many generations who grow together in faith and affirm and support one another. Today brings a world in need of healing and wholeness, where we have a God who promises healing and wholeness. Today we give thanks for the church the society, and the world. Today, let us rejoice and be glad. <laughs> if you have not, uh, if you have a thank offering and have not put it in this basket, you need not worry. As, as the offering plate is passed, you may put it in the offering plate. Uh, let me introduce to you our officers and who we have here. The president happens to be Mick Freeberg. Vice President Rose Hobine, Secretary Nadine Melgren, Treasurer Carolyn Malcolm, who's, who's absent. Circle leaders, by the way, these are all the same um, officers as served last year. Circle leaders, Jan Snath, Jane Swab, our Martha Circle, Joanne Kruger, Esther Circle, Mick Freeberg, Lydia Circle. Boy, you're a busy woman. <laughs> Let us dedicate these offerings. 
We hear your calling, O oh God. Generous God, you provide for us and you endow us with the gospel. Bless these thank offerings of the women of the ELCA. Direct them where they are most needed to further your kingdom. Give us guidance and courage to live in the fullness of your grace, to reveal your redeeming love. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you. The second reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated, it, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Then, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are, prepared, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not care, take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. 
the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come forward. Here, Zach, come, come, you can sit right next to me, okay? I need your help. Here we go. We're going to sing a song. And I tell the daycare every time we meet, this is my favorite song, at least when I'm around little kids. And it goes like this. I want you to help me with it, so I'm going to sing it. I'm going to sing one phrase, and then you, I want you to repeat it. And maybe the grown-ups can help us, okay? Here's how it goes. Zach? Over here, Zach. Repeat after me, okay? I am special. I am special. It is true. It is true. I know that God loves me. I know that God loves me. Loves you too. Okay, so that means we're all special, right? Zach is special, God loves him. But we're all special, God loves us. Now here's the, the interesting thing about it. When we know we're loved, what do we do? We tend to be loving people. So we know Jesus is our king who loves us, who proves to us that God loves us. So now we have the power to love, okay? Right, Zach? All right. So Jesus is our king. He's a king of love who loves us. And when we know he loves us, we love. All right. Let's bow our heads and fold our hands and pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, Gracious God. We, thank you for Jesus. we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he is the king of love. Help us remember that we are loved. Then help us to love. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Having um, three grandsons, they are special, aren't they? Let's uh, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, there's probably nothing worse in our culture than to be called a loser. In fact, um, I mean, isn't, isn't that the problem with politics? There's always a loser and a winner. With, um, oh, sports, a loser and a winner. Uh, there would be a lot of losers this afternoon, and a lot of winners, too, I suppose. And our society has a way of dividing people up as losers and winners, and I suppose that's one of the reasons we do not like the, the thought of Judgment Day. And this dividing of the sheep of the goats, because there's losers and there's winners. And we don't want to be a loser, do we? Well, just think how our society determines who's a loser. In, um, in the 1800s, early 1800s, the Mercantile Agency 
uh, was developed. And what they did was they looked at people in business and determined their creditworthiness. And they looked at a particular gentleman by the name of William Henry Biz Brisbane. And you may have heard of uh, Henry Brisbane. By the way, there's all kinds of, of um, websites on the internet for losers and failures. And many would consider William Henry Bisbane a failure. The um, auditor of, uh, of the Mercantile Agency reported that Brisbane failed in every occupation he ever tried, including farming, publishing, and even practicing medicine. We predict that he would likely fail for the rest of his life. He inherited $100,000, which in his day, that was real money. That meant he was a multimillionaire in our day. And he soon was parted from that money. Just like uh, we hear about people who win the lottery and soon lose it all. What happened with this $100,000? Well, he was, he was born in the South. He, his, his father, his parents owned a plantation, owned slaves, very lucrative. He inherited that when they died and uh, inherited on top of it, not only this plantation with slaves, so free labor, abundant land. He was set for life. He happened to be on a trip up north. Uh, by the way, he was a Christian. And he fully believed slavery was God's will. He truly believed that people with dark skin were inferior to people with white skin, so it was just fine for, for them to be enslaved. He happened to take a trip up north, and it was actually a speaking engagement he was on, and he read an abolitionist pamphlet. And for the first time, it hit him. This is not right. Slavery is not right. So he went down to the south again, and all the people, his neighbors, considered him a heretic, considered him an anarchist. So he decided, I better get out of here. He sold the plantation, went up north, and was going to live. But then it bothered him so much that his slaves were still enslaved. So he took his $100,000 and bought his slaves back, took them up to Wisconsin and settled them up there. Wisconsin. Mercantile society. He's likely to fail the rest of his life, right? By the way, he worked for the, the government as an auditor and also as, a, on the side, he was a Baptist preacher. But that's the way we decide in our society who the winners and losers are. It does the, the name um, Bob Parr, uh, ring a bell, Bob Parr happened to be, well, he, in a movie, and he lived an ordinary office life. He listened to the police scanner radio all the time to see if there might be some way that he could uh, uh, be of some use. His wife thought he was advancing in, in uh, the business he was in so she, he could provide them with an ever-increasing, better uh, lifestyle. Bob Parr was waiting for the day when he could stop being a loser and he could be Mr. Incredible. We even teach it to our kids in our, at a young age in our movies. To be ordinary, to live a life simply, knowing you're a person of worth and serving is to be a loser. You've got to do something great grandiose. Well, William Henry Brisbane 
Might have been a losing, loser in, in mer the mercantile society, but in God's eyes, he was a winner. He was a winner. There's something about these sheep and these goats. Notice, they're not very bright. They cannot tell who's a sheep and who's a goat. And then, on top of it, they didn't know when they had done something extraordinary. They didn't know that they had met Jesus, those that had served, those that had loved, those that had given. What distinguishes sheep from goats, it appears, is that the sheep are the giving ones. They fed the hungry. They gave water to the thirsty. They clothed the naked. They cared for the sick. They visited the prisons. They were givers. Remember, do you remember uh, Jim West? Jim West used to bother me all the time with something, and he, I guess he wanted it to be a theme at Messiah, and maybe it should be. He kept saying, Pastor Dan, the, the secret is thanks living. Thanks living. And I go, thank you, Jim. <laughs> if, you, if you don't remember Jim, he was an interesting character. But thanks living, that was what his theme, he wanted his theme to be. Thanks living. Well, that seems what, to be what, exactly what God's people, what distinguishes sheep from goats is the sheep know they're cared for. Sheep know that God has given them great gifts, blessed them, loves them. Sheep, now because of that love and knowing they have everything they have, everything they need, can share. Thanks, living. Uh, by the way, Tertullian, early church father, wrote how God had a par particular respect for the lowly and that caring for the poor was the distinctive sign of believers. The pagan emperor Julian the Apostate vehemently opposed Christians and tried to oppress them and take away their rights and privileges. He said, the, uh, the Christians, the godless Galileans, feed not only their own poor, but our poor. Acknowledge there's something unusual about God's people, that they somehow care. We, as God's people, touched by God's grace, are supposed to be just that, giving, caring. And the uh, unique thing is that when we do give, and we do care, Jesus says, we meet him. We care for him. Let me share one last story about um, someone who, who really struggled with um, giving. And in his case, he needed to give Forgiveness. He felt he needed to. And uh, his name was Shailing Mai. I have had this in my files. It's from um, the, the devotional that comes out, the upper room. How many are familiar with that? A few of you, the upper room. And it's such a horrific story. But Shailing Mai had his three-year-old daughter was sexually assaulted by two men. And somehow, because he was a Christian, he felt that God wanted him to do something. 
He, he felt that God wanted him to forgive. Can you imagine? Forgive these two men. Can you think of more goat-like like behavior than these two men had? And he read a passage about forgiveness, especially the uh, verse from Matthew that our Lord's Prayer comes from. Uh, forgive us as Forgive us our sins as we have, as we forgive others. And he read that and it haunted him. And he said this, This morning when I read the passage about forgiveness, I thought of the two men who had assaulted, sexually assaulted my three-year-old daughter. How can I ever forgive them? They do not deserve to be forgiven. I could find no room in my heart to forgive such a heinous crime. My innocent, delicate little girl, how dare they do such a thing? I have cried many nights, and every time I think of their cruelty, my heart simply rebels. A small new thought came to me today. Forgiveness sees not the enormity of the deed, but the enormity of the need to be forgiven. We should never say, that sin is too big to be forgiven. Rather, we, we, we should say, that sin needs more than ever to be forgiven. When a child comes in from play with a dirty face and hands, we do not say, you are too dirty to be cleaned. We say, you need more than anything to be washed. And we take the child and gently wash off all the smudges. I'm not sure if this will help others to forgive what seems like the unforgivable, but somehow it helped me. Even as the tears run down my face while I write, my heart says, Lord, forgive those men. Shailing Mai was someone who knew he was forgiven. knowing he's loved, forgiven, cared for by God. He then had the power to give. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the saints who have gone before us and giving thanks for God's blessings, we pray for the church, all in need, and God's good creation. Shepherd King, we pray for your whole church. May we continue to joyfully proclaim your love to the world. Let us pray. King of creation, guide our care of creation. Help us resist the temptations to use it wastefully and seek more opportunities for restoration and wise use. Let us pray. King of the nations, may the leaders of the world come to the knowledge that your peace brings plenty and your wisdom brings justice. Knowing we are cared for, help us to care for those others in the world. We remember those in Ferguson who will be troubled no matter what the grand jury decides. For those still recovering from Ebola, for those suffering at the hands of ISIS and other Middle East madness, and for our country and immigrants as we debate the president's executive action, let us pray. Our healing king, we pray for our brothers and sisters in any need that they receive healing, hope, and comfort in your name. We remember especially Teresa Baumgartner, Doris Embertson, Tiffany Giles, Jim Lampy, Betty Lassant, Dorothy Lokensgaard, Karen Lotion, Rose McGiles, Darlene McLaughlin, Pat Morrison, Ron Murhammer, Suzanne No, Trish Norberg, Jim Runyon, Mary Thomas, Janice Trotter, David Ugla. Are there any others? For the blessed gifts of saintly lives that they inspire the witness of all believers who live in your promises. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Bub, Bud Norton, Leora May Stifes, and George No. Let us pray. Receive our prayers and hopes, Good Shepherd, and bring us safely into all joy and peace through Christ our Lord.
our God. As grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food, you created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You sent your Son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. given for you. Elizabeth, God loves you. God bless you. God strengthen you with his grace, mercy, peace, and love. Amen. Body of Christ given for you, Shannon. David, the body of Christ given for you. Lori, the body of Christ given for you. Madison, the blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. David, the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you, Lori. Amen.
that you go with Shannon.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, the host at every meal. At this table you spread out a feast for all peoples, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Send us from this banquet to invite others into these good things, to let justice roll down like waters, and to care for the least of our sisters and brothers. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and our Savior. Amen. Two things, actually three, I'd like to emphasize. Number one, 12.30 today, annual meeting to elect officers or elect uh, members of the church council to fill vacancies. And Wednesday night, Thanksgiving Eve, we always gather here and have a Thanksgiving worship service. And then we gather in the fellowship hall for a pie social that will again go on this year, 7 p.m. for worship. That was two things. Pre-sliced. Pre oh, Lucy is recommending that your, sli your pies be pre-sliced. Right after Thanksgiving, there are two birthdays being celebrated next Saturday, and one is for Chris Moss, and the other is for a very precious woman who's standing in the back. She probably doesn't even know I'm going to do this, but Aviga Iantri. Linnea, if you can get her to wave her hand. Aviga Iantri will be 99 next um, Saturday, and she will be in Texas with her family there. We have cake in the back for Chris Moss and Aviga Iantri. Come back and have cake after service. I thought I heard something about us singing, ha having happy birthday sung in <laughs> Swedish. Och när hon har levat, och när hon har levat, och när hon har levat ut i hundrade år. Ja då ska hon skjutas, ja då ska hon skjutas, ja då ska hon skjutas på en skottkärra fram. Grattis på födelsedagen! Happy birthday! We'll have to take Vega's word for it. That was, that, that was happy birthday. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday By the way, Vega was born in Sweden, came over here as a very young girl, married an Italian. <laughs> Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace, be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, and offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace. Christ is with you.